purposes only. Article 6, to transact any other school business thought proper when met. The, the Australian ballot question, Article 7, shall the voters of Mount Mansfield Unified Union School District approve the school boards to expend $55,274,112, which is the amount the school board has determined to be necessary for the 2023-24 fiscal year. Upon closing the polls, the ballot boxes will be sealed, transported to and opened at Camel's Hump Middle School in the town of Richmond. The ballots commingled and publicly counted by representatives of the boards of civil authority of the towns Bolton, Huntington, Jericho, Richmond, and Underhill, under the supervision of the clerk of the Mount Mansfield Union Unified Union School District. Informational hearing. Said persons and voters are further notified and warned that the meeting on Thursday, March 2nd, 2023, at 6 p.m. at the Mount Mansfield Union High School in Jericho shall also serve as an informational meeting to discuss Article 7, which will be voted on by Australian ballot on March 7th, 2023. Article 1. Good evening. Uh, we're going to just take a minute. If somebody on the uh, Google Meet could just speak up and let us know if you can hear us okay. Yes, we can hear you now. All right, thank you. My name is Kevin Campbell. I'm the uh, vice chair of the school board. I will be up here for only a short period of time working through article number one, which is to elect uh, the following officials or officers. I'll be doing the first one, which is moderator for one year. And we'll do this uh, on the floor. And I would entertain a motion at this time for moderator. I would entertain a motion for Dave Clark to be moderator. Somebody could say so moved. So moved. Is there a second? Second. There are seconds, multiples. Are there any other nominations for moderator? I'll call the nominations to a close. Given that there is only one nomination for moderator, we will go ahead and, and vote. As a reminder, we will only be voting, those on the floor will only be the ones voting tonight, uh, given the rules of this hybrid meeting. So, all those in favor of Dave Clark for the position of moderator signify by saying aye. Uh -huh. All those opposed say nay. The ayes have it. Now I have to say that Due to state laws taking precedent over parliamentary procedures, all elected officers must be elected by ballot. So we will direct the clerk to cast one ballot in favor of Dave Clark, so that this will be official according to Vermont law. That's all I have to say, right? Unless there's an objection, that's the last part. And to seeing no objection, that's what we'll do. All right. Thankfully, I'll now hand the microphone over to our new moderator, Dave Clark, for the rest of the officer elections. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the floor is open for nominations for clerk from Mount Mansfield Unified Union School District. <coughs> Do we have any nominations? Kevin? Um, what's Pat, Pat Strong. Strong. I nominate Pat Strong. Strong. I would say Pat, sorry, Strong. Just Strong. Pat Strong for a clerk. Okay, do I have a second for that nomination? Uh, do we have any other nominations for the position of the clerk? Seeing none. 
I would say the nominations are closed. All those in favor of electing Pat Strong to the position of clerk for the Mount Mansfield Unified Union School District signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. Okay. Uh, well, I, it's a little awkward, but Pat would cast one ballot for herself for the position of clerk. Next is the position of treasurer for uh, for one year for Mount Mansfield Unified Union School District. The floor is open for nominations. Do I? Yes. Okay. And is there a second to that nomination? Thank you. Are there other nominations? Seeing none. Uh, Nominations are closed. All those in favor of electing Dave Clark for the position of treasurer from Mount Mansfield Unified Union School District signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. All right, thank you very much. All right, and oh, yes, uh, instructing the clerk to cast a ba one ballot for Dave Clark for the position of treasurer. Mount Mansfield Unified Union School District. That part's always a little awkward for me. Even though I'm standing here. Okay, Article 2. Shall the voters of Mount Mansfield Unified Union School District authorize the school board under 16 BSA 562 subsection 9 to borrow money by issuance of bonds and or notes not in excess of anticipated revenue for the school year? I would look for a motion to bring that article to the floor. So moved. And a second? Second. Thank you. Discussion. Seeing no discussion, I am going to put the, uh, that article for a for vote. I'll read it again just so that everyone's clear. The article that you're voting on, shall the voters of Mount Mansfield Unified Union School District authorize the school board under 16 BSA 562 subsection 9 to borrow money by issuance of bonds or notes not in excess of anticipated revenues, revenue, excuse me, for the school year. All those in favor of that article signify by saying aye. All those opposed say nay. The ayes have it and the article passes. Thank you. Article 3. Shall the Mount Mansfield Unified Union School District vote on all questions by Australian ballot? Can I see a motion to bring that article to the floor? And a second. Thank you. Discussion on this article. Yes. Can I, can I speak to the article? Sure. Can everyone hear me? People can come up here and use the microphone if you want. I just want to, this is brand new to our district, um, and I just wanted to just give a little bit of background as to why we're bringing this forward as a board. Um, as folks in the room can see, we do not have a um, significant portion of our district members here. Um, we have one, two, three, 10, 11 people, 10 people, 11, yeah. 10 people in our district, sorry, I'll look closer, um, for a district that has many, many more voters, 15,000 people we represent. Um, and so this article is designed to give all of the people in our district a lot more input into the running of the district. And so that's why we're bringing this forward. Um, we had wanted to do it just as the pandemic was coming in and all of the rules changed statewide. So this is something that's been in the works for a number of years. So I just wanted to be very clear as to why, to give more people more opportunity to weigh in on the activities of the district. Are there are other comments on this article.
Seeing none, ready for the vote. Um, sorry, just to make sure, we're, there was one comment I think made that relevant to this article. Uh, somebody on the on the meet. Um, yeah, no, I just posted the. Uh, right. That was right. Okay. No, we're good. I just we're all along. Now ready. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, David. All right, I'll read it again for you both. Article three, shall Mount Man, the Mount Mansfield Unified Union School District vote on all public questions by Australian ballot. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, say nay. The ayes have it, and the article passes. Thank you. Article four. Shall the Mount Mansfield Unified Union School District elect the moderator, clerk, treasurer, and all other elected officials by Australian ballot? I get a motion to bring that to the floor. So moved. And a second? Second. Discussion. Seeing none. I'll read it one more time and they can vote on it. Article 4. Shall the Mount Mansfield Unified Union School District elect the moderator, clerk, treasurer, and all other elected officials by Australian ballot? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, say nay. The ayes I have it, and the article passes. Article 5. This time serves as public information hearing for the public review of the 2023-24 proposed budget for discussion purposes only. At this point, I turn the microphone over to John Alberghini, who will be walking you through this budget. Thank you, Dave. <coughs> <Did> you, uh... <coughs> Tired when you get a little older, is that I have to switch between the glasses. So I can't see far away, but I, I can't read with my glasses up close. So bear with me, please. Um, in fact, could you put the presentation up? Oh, sorry about that. Well, I'm going to jump right in. Um, and to say thank you to, to everybody that is here tonight uh, for taking the time to be here. I'm sure you're very busy and appreciate your interest in Mount Mansfield and the students and our whole school community. I also want to um, thank the entire school community for all of the support over the last you know, really three years, from COVID to recovery. Um, I'm so proud and grateful to work in a place where people really care about one another and uh, our staff, parents, our students, um, during some really difficult times have really uh, come together and showed an immense amount of kindness and support and care. Um, and this budget supports the students you know, so that they can be successful. That's, that is um, the number one thing about the budget. We're hoping that we're offering it to the community at, at a cost that they can afford. Next. So here's our school district. This is Mount Mansfield. We have five towns, 200 square miles, which is big, um, from Hanksville to Pleasant Valley, uh, which is a long way. I did it, well, I think about two weeks ago. It took me about 45 minutes. Um, five elementary schools, two middle schools. We have the district's preschool at the UIG building. There's driving. Um, and one high school, which we're at tonight, in a central office. And we serve uh, approximately 2,600 students. That includes all of our district kids, students that are preschool in our district buildings, as well as um, students that are preschoolers that are part of private partnerships. Next, please. So the MMUA. Um, 
this is, is probably my favorite slide out of all of them. But on the top right, the left hand corner, um, this was an initiative that started at Camel Sound, Kindness Matters. And I'm going to put these, I love props too, so the, I have a bunch of stickers. I'm going to put them over there. Please grab one on your way out. Um, this motto or initiative really has taken root across the school district. So when you walk into any building, you're going to see some sort of a symbol of um, the commitment to being kind, empathetic, caring, respectful, and inclusive. And I think the Kindness Matters um, initiative and uh, symbol says a lot about you know, who we are, and what we want to do, and how we want to be. Um, the the right-hand picture uh, is a picture that Dave Marlow gave me a couple of weeks ago. And in it, he, um, he t was talking about uh, there was a rice game, a boys basketball rice game, and the gym was packed. And um, he had shared with me that he was just so proud and impressed with the kids, the students, student body. And he said they were having fun, they were cheering on their team, um, but they were being respectful, they were being thoughtful, um, and they were having fun. Uh, and he had shared with me that some adults after the game had come up and, and told him, wow, you know, with all the the news um, out there that uh, I would say some bad behavior at sporting events, he really thought it was important for me to know that. And that's the kind of culture that we're, we're trying to build. And the budget supports all of that um, because we want to give students diverse learning opportunities to show who they are and to meet their own aspirations. The, the bottom left um, is, is a book. So I happen to be at an elementary school and preschool. I love preschool. I love kindergarten as well. And I popped my head into this preschool because um, there was a, I was there a few weeks ago, and the student was telling me about this great trip they were going to. So I wanted to check in with the, the student who's four, and I wanted to say, "How was your trip?" It sounds really exciting. So I walk in the door, and the teacher says. Would you like to be our guest reader? And I said, sure, I would love to. And uh, so she hands me this book. And um, I, I've never, I've never read it before. I've never seen it. And um, and I started reading it, and it, it really brought me back to the MMU way, what we're trying to teach students, and the try, kind of culture that we're trying to build. And um, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna read a couple pages, it's very brief, um, but it says, if you see someone lonely, say something, by just being there with them. And I got a couple more. This is my bridge version. <laughs> um, if you're angry, say something to help people understand. You made me feel invisible, that really hurt. I'm really sorry. Sounds, it sounds simple, but pretty powerful. Then I have one more. Um, some people find it easier to say something than others. And then there's these little captions down below, which is so true, right? We all have to find our own voice. And it says, I hope, I believe, join us, I wish, together we can. I'm ready to change the world, I imagine. Every voice matters. And then, you know, connected to that, it says, but everyone has something to say, which is, again, you know, so true. And the whole book um, really goes into valuing people for who they are, and, and we're all different, and that's great, and that's what makes um, America great and our school system great. Uh, and that's the kind of message and the kind of education we're trying to give all the students at NMU. Um, now we have a lot of work to do. We're not perfect, and um, but we're trying really hard. And when you go into our schools and you see our staff um, and the hard work that they're doing and giving 100% every day, it's it's inspiring. 
Um, next, please. And then I have a couple other pictures I'm going to highlight. I couldn't fit them on the screen, but you'll see them. And I think they're pretty cool. But here are some overarching priorities that we have. Um, you know, these are some really discrete, distinct ones that we're really focused on right now. And these are in our budget. Um, the, the funds in the budget, um, they help to support some of these high priorities that we have. Now, we have many. But um, if you have too many priorities, you have none, right? So we really try to focus on some that will leverage the biggest benefit for students. And the first is, um, you know, after COVID and into recovery, the social and emotional and mental health of students and staff. We all have to feel good. Um, and then continue our, our anti-bias, anti-racism, and equity efforts to make sure that our schools are uh, inclusive to everybody. Everybody's valued. They belong. Early literacy, um, proficiency, this is a big one. You know, reading and early literacy is a foundation for everything that we do. And so we put a lot of time and effort and resources um, to try to make sure that kids are where they need to be and they're reading proficiently. And then um, this is, there's, you know, there's some acronyms in here, but multi-tiered systems of support. That's really just having layers and tiers in the system so that no student falls through the cracks. They're getting their needs met. And we're assessing them you know, uh, with formative assessments that um, are not all the same but they focus on who the student is, what their learning style is, um, and there are multiple ways to do that. And then I call it sort of the glue that brings it all together is really promoting professional learning communities and routines so that when you're talking about students, we're focused on data, and then what are some strategies that we're gonna use to either help a student that might be a little behind or need support, or somebody that is you know, ready to to go um, and need some some something at a higher or different level, and then the alignment of the curriculum is also something that brings it all together. We have you know we have multiple elementary schools, we have two middle schools, all feeding into one high school. So we have to make sure our curriculum is aligned so that there's equity across the system. Okay. And I'm not going to read these to you. Um, but these, and this is also the bedrock of the budget. So um, a few years ago, over probably a year and a half or two years, um, the board and the district did a lot of community engagement, collected a lot of information from community members, and tried to look for themes and distill them into some overarching big goals. And these are the ones that um, we came up with, and essentially, it having students that are love to learn, that are lifetime learners, and we're giving them a lot of different opportunities to show us their learning and the mastery of certain proficiencies, and we're doing it in a variety of ways. Uh, and then, uh, and we're doing it at a cost that, hope that the community can hopefully support. And that we're getting kids ready for either college, the military, or a career, or a certificate when they leave us. Um, and we're giving the students the best tools that we can to be able to do that. And I, I just took this picture. Uh, it's amazing. I, I didn't get the finished product, um, but I saw it. So this is an eighth grade, this is at Campbell's Home Village. And there's a product, they're, they're doing these projects. This is a dog bowl. And the legs are slanted, you know, so this dog can get down and um, it's measured perfectly. The dog's name is Blaze. Um, and it's not on there yet, but I was able to see the finished product. But the intricacy and the excitement, I was in the room watching these kids do this, the students, and it was just, it was a, a, a learning and the excitement was, was massive. And, um, there were so many skills that they were learning. And of course, you know, we have some um, incredible musicians as well. And that all that put together is a well-rounded education, and that's what we're trying to provide. Next, please. Um, and I'm not going to I'm not going to read through all of these, but these are just some of the investments and opportunities that are in the budget. You can go back and look at it. 
this is online. And then we tried to really align it with some of our top priorities. And then I added the physical plant as well, because we need to maintain our buildings. And thanks to really hardworking maintenance folks, we, um, our, our buildings are in good shape for the age. They're in excellent shape. Um, for the age, and that's because of attention and hard work and a lot of investment over the years um, from the community. Next, please. So I didn't do very well in my budget targets this year. Traditionally, I do. Um, I have really, we do, not me. Um, we did not do a very good job of our targets. But yeah, I take personally, so that's why I used I am a four guy. Um, but you know the inflationary pressures were really just too much. We set these targets pretty early on. And um, as we were going through the budget process, which is really needs-based, you know, we look at what students and schools need, and that's what's in the budget. Um, we couldn't do that and meet those targets. Next please. Let's not focus on this slide. Come on. Uh, and I wanted to also introduce uh, Nicole Forquet. Um, she's our director of finance and operations. I should have done that right off. Um, but I was excited about the end of the way, uh, <coughs> digging into that. And she has done an excellent job. Um, this being her, the first budget that she has put together. And I really appreciate your hard work. Thank you. These are these are the budget drivers, no surprises. Salary and wages. We do have a couple of additional positions. Um, and we do have a reduction as well. And health insurance is up, you know, really it's I think it's twelve point seven because this is before we got the estimate. Um, but it's what is in the budget. Special services, again, it's salaries and insurance, but also um, the services, contracted services for students that need really specific services are up. Um, and that could be a student that needs support um, uh, with technology uh, or with, with behavior or vision. Um, and all those costs are up. They really are. More than I've just never seen them. And, and then a couple of reductions. Uh, we've had the state of the federal government has fully funded um, school of lunch and breakfast for the last I don't know, two and a half years. So we don't need to have as big a transfer to, the, to support our food service program. So that's the reduction. We're borrowing um, uh, less money. So our, um, our, our interest is down, but also our borrowing, our borrowing is down. And then we did increase the capital reserve Transfer by two hundred thousand. Uh, typically, it's a hundred. Um, so that was a, an increase. And we, if you look in your annual report, you'll see that we have a capital reserve fund um, that we have been uh, maintaining for a number of years. And then um, some other miscellaneous expenses: uh, buses cost more, hotels cost more, everything costs more. Next, please. So these are, um, the, well, I'll start with the reduction, the personnel reduction. We are, we're gonna see approximately 20 less, uh, I think, students next year. Um, and most of those are at the high school. And we can make a, a reduction of one FTE because there will be, there's less students, there's less sections. Um, and, but we do have some additions as well. We are. Um, we have a need for more um, high quality, high, high quality, and highly skilled interventionists. These are people that support students that um, are not meeting grade level proficiencies or standards, mostly at the, at the elementary level. Um, and we have. We do have an increase in special ed students. We have two categories of. Um, uh, of disability, which are uh, autism spectrum disorder and uh, emotional disturbance that are up. Uh, uh, emotional disturbance is up 24% and um, uh, ASD is up 10%. This, 
they, they need more services, more time, and that is, um, that's why we have those additions in there. When we have a 25 as a literacy coach, for us to be able to meet that priority, and we have a pretty big goal of 90% of, um, of students by grade three will uh, meet the grade level standards and proficiencies in 2025, which is a lofty goal. Um, and it's aspirational, but uh, we need we need people working with teachers you know, day in and day out to show them what best practices are and to get the best possible resources in the hands of teachers and in front of students. Next, please. This is also in the annual report, but here's a budget comparison um, over the last three years. Next, please. And here's our tax rate. Um, this is a three-year comparison. So it, it, this is, it has literally gone down the last two fiscal years. But, um, and I try to put this in the bumper sticker down below, that there's been a surplus in the Ed Fund, and the, the legislature has used that surplus, and there's, it's, some of this is statutory um, to reduce to um, elevate the property yield, which bring, which lowers the tax rate. Next, please. Here's our enrollment. So we're down around 20 students. Um, we're, we're good. Some good news um, is that we're relatively flat, K to four, and uh, and essentially you know pretty flat to five eight. So that's good news. Um, and so those kids will matriculate up to the high school. But we are seeing a reduction in um, at the high school. Next, please. And here's the the Ed funding formula is a three year comparison. And I won't go through this with you, um, you know, step by step. The, the math is in the left hand side, but you have your education spending. It's divided by your equalized pupils. Now, education spending um, is you take out all of the non property tax revenue. So, most of that is in uh, IDA uh, B or special ed. And you divide it by equalized pupils. Pupils are weighted differently um, depending on if they're um, country reduced launch or English language learners or how old they are. Um, Students that are weighted uh, are weighted higher uh, at the high school level than they are at the elementary level. Um, and then when I talked about the property yield, and that is going up, you know, more than 16%. Um, you add, you uh, factor in the spending adjustment, which is essentially, you know, how much more. Our spending is for equalized people compared to that property yield and our tax rate. Next, please. So, this is a we were able to thank you to, thank you to Nicole for being able to, you know, what does all this mean, right? Unless you have something to compare it to. And so, we were able to really find out um, where people are. Uh, what their budgets are going to look like that are being presented to voters like ours. And this is how we compare. Um, we are, you know, we're, we have the second, second um, lowest at spending per equalized people in the county. So to try to give a little bit of perspective, um, if your at spending per equalized pupil is lower, your tax rate is lower. Now, if you're in the same school, if you're in the same school district, um, and but it's also lower than if you're, you know, your 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 tax rate is lower than Champlain Valley, um, as well because they're spending for equalized people is higher. Next, and the common level of appraisal. So the next part of this is the common level of appraisal or the CLA. So I'm going to try to explain this the best that I can. Um, I've had a, a few shots at this over the years, so I'm going to do my very best. Um, 
you have this is like these range are likely don't they? I mean, they really really do. So what, you take a look at Underhill, who just recently had a reappraisal. Um, so what they the state does is they take a look at a rolling average in your town of what your house sales are, and they compare that that average to what your your houses are assessed for, um, and what the grand list is, and um, if it's at 100%, then your tax rate um, would be exactly what the school district's tax rate is. Um, but if it isn't, if your houses are assessed less than what the state says that your houses are worth in the grand list, then they have to adjust the common level of appraisal. Uh, it goes down, and that essentially uh, adjusts your tax rate. So 100% you know, is good. The lower you go down, like uh, the lowest Richmond has, uh, has the lowest CLA, that um, that is you're going to see you know an increase in your tax rate. Now, the good news is that um, what the state is trying to do is say if you're living in Richmond and your house is worth in the grand list. So what the state says it's worth, not what the town does. It's worth, the state says 300,000, um, and you live in Underhill, and they're saying this house is worth 300,000 in the grand list, then you should be paying the same amount of money if you're in the same school district. So every town in uh, Mount Mansfield, uh, except for Underhill, is gonna have to have a reappraisal. When you get below 80, 85 percent i think it is then you have to go through a reappraisal um, so everybody uh in our school district is going to you know need to do a statutorily have to do a reappraisal and if you look at the state of vermont i mean it's like 85 percent of all schools of all towns are having to do it and it's because we've seen something you know pretty uh, uh unique in that houses are selling for a lot more than they did four years ago. Um, and that, that, that has impacted us as well. Next. Okay. Um, the, on the, the last slide, we have some backup slides, and I'd say, you know, take a look at them if you get a chance. I won't go through them, but I do, there's some more comparative data in there. It just gives you a better sense of how we compare to other districts. But this is the process that we have gone through. Um, we started this in September. It's a multi month, complex, uh, and pretty comprehensive amount of work. And the budget that we're going to present to the voters, um, we feel, is will meet the needs of students. That's what I have. I could say, I'd love to say, but I won't. Questions? Yes, sir. What do you project for enrollment over the next five or ten years? Um, I think it's going to be pretty, it's, right now it looks like it's going to be flat. We're going to probably dip a little bit at the high school, and then it's going to level off. Um, so our enrollment is likely going to be flat um, once we get through a bubble at the high school. So is that at all levels, being elementary school, middle school? Yep. Yep. When I look at you know, preschool is a moving target because some of these students you don't even know that are out there. But it looks like you know our preschool numbers are about the same or a little bit higher than they were this year. So that's good news too. So we're not shrinking. We're not sure. You know, we were sure. Um, and you're seeing the result of that at the high school, but we're, we're pretty static. Um, and it, I showed it in the graph. You can see we're, we're, we're pretty flat at the elementary and middle school level. Other questions? All right. Well, uh, thank you for your time. Um, that was not the abridged version, um, uh, but I hope that, I hope to help people understand the budget and um, understand what we're trying to do.
or where Article 6 which transact any other school business thought proper for that. Now, you have to understand, you cannot do anything that causes the district to spend money. You cannot do anything that uh, compels the school district to take a specific action. Anything that is in this part of this, this article is merely an advisory capacity. Just want you to be clear, you know, th this is the, uh, this is how it goes. This is the same way it, this article has always been. It's not a change. So, uh, is there any, uh, any other business? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Or you just want to stay here? Yes. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. And a second? It's not a debatable motion. <laughs> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed? You can stay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>